Hey everybody, I'm, I'm Roxy and this is Gospel Music with Friends Online. This is my first time to be able to be on YouTube and to share a live video uh, just from me to you. So I'm really excited about this and looking forward to, um, to the next few minutes of sharing some music that people have given me their permission to play. And uh, some of the music is found on my channel. And also some of it is just, uh, uh, I have another channel as well that the music belongs to me and I'm gonna play that as well, plus some testimonies. So this is what Gospel Music with Friends Online is all about. It's about personal testimonies, interviews, and gospel music. So we're first gonna start out with Bob Monroe from Peterborough, Ontario. And he wrote a song this week. You're going to enjoy it. And uh, Bob just decided that he was going to share that with us. Hi. It's Pastor Brian Charles was teaching on healing last night. He mentioned the fact of how many people believe they're saved and know they're saved, but they don't accept the fact that they can be healed or are healed. <clears throat> and I received these simple words. Believe to receive, and you'll be healed. Believe to receive, you are healed. Believe to receive, you'll be healed. Believe to receive, you are healed. It's that simple, folks. <laughs> And it is that simple. I love that he said that at the very end of that song. The whole reason why Gospel Music with Friends Online is here for you is that we want to share the good news of the gospel through music and through the testimonies of other people. So you're going to hear a lot of that. You're going to hear a great testimony tonight. Um, it's actually an interview, but it's of a minister who not only preaches, but sings. And she's all the way from Nova Scotia. But first, we're going to listen to Kim Inch, Cheryl Dunn, and myself. This program actually with myself and Cheryl was a few months back. And also, Bob's going to sing again for us. A number of our days, so I can work on it later. We will fulfill all you will. Let's all go down to the river There's a man, he's walking on the water Come along with me For I want to see this man walking on the water He can raise a dead from the grave Change the water and turn it into wine he can make the lame walk, he can make the dumb talk, and open up the eyes of blind. Oh, let's all go down to the river, there's a man, he's walking on the water. Come along with me, for I want to see this man walking on the water. Jesus is the man at the river, he's washing people's sins away. He can save your soul if 
you give him control, be ready on that judgment day. Let's all go down to the river. There's a man, he's walking on the water. Come along with me, for I want to see. There's a man's walking on the what the media says, no matter what's happening out there, no matter what anybody's going through, we know you created the world. Your word is forever. It never, never changes. So God, we rest in you today. And we worship you like we've never worshipped you before. You are the maker. You are the creator. 
and we love you. In Jesus' name, amen. Those words are so fitting with the way the state of the world is right now. And we thank you, Cheryl, for that. We need to be encouraged and to encourage one another. And that's what I pray that you will get out of tonight's program. Coming up now, we have a minister all the way from Nova Scotia, Beverly Tripp, and Rose Naomi O'Bray is going to interview her. It's quite, uh, oh, I'd say it's a little lengthy, but you know what? It's full of music and very, very interesting. Um, because Bev not only ministers, but she sings as well. I'm, without further ado, here they are. And it's a beautiful interview. Welcome everyone to another segment of Gospel Music with Friends Online. And our guest today is Bev Tripp. And uh, we're going to hear some exciting things from Bev today about her ministries. And Bev, can you tell me um, what drew you to gospel music? Well, um, I was uh, saved in my early 30s, and I had always been a lover of music as a, as a child growing up. Um, learned to sort of hack away on the guitar, <laughs> uh, more like a campfire guitarist. And then when I became a Christian, I just um, really fell in love with the Lord and I just wanted to uh, sing my songs to him oh, and for him. That's beautiful. I've heard you sing, so I know it's beautiful. Thank you. You're welcome. And has there been anybody that, um, that you can tell our audience about uh, that, who's inspired you uh, through, your, through your walk, through your ministry at all? Well, there have been probably too many people to really name or, or number. Uh, my uh, my years uh, ha as a Christian have been uh, they're up to a, a thirty plus now. <laughs> uh, there have been many many authors and writers. Um, in terms of, of Christian musicians, wow! I I love pretty much every genre of Christian music, um, country, uh, you know, gospel, uh, hymns, sacred music. Um, I, I really just enjoy it all. That's beautiful, yeah. for sure. Are there any other pathways that you um, have had or careers that you've had throughout your life that you'd like to tell us about? Oh, well, yeah, there's, there's been a few of those. <laughs> so um, when I got saved, I, uh, shortly thereafter, I was in my early 30s and I went to the mission field. And so that was uh, something that, um, and Keith Green, actually, um, his book, No Compromise, yes. that was a, a hugely significant uh, chapter of my life when I, when I read that book. And uh, Keith Green said in that book, if, if God doesn't say no, then you should go. And I just really felt that was for me. So onto the mission field I went. And um, after being out there for uh, some years, and not too many, about two and a half, three years, um, the Lord called me home. And he told me to go to school. And so I went to Regent College and um, studied to become uh, a pastor. And I got to my MDiv. Um, then I ended up uh, through a series of various uh, uh, small jobs. Um, becoming a chaplain. Wow. And so the, the music ministry in chaplaincy was uh, very valuable and uh, came in handy <laughs> a lot of the time because I was able to use the music to, uh, to reach folks and connect with folks. And still today. And still today. Yeah. Wow, that's, yeah. that's wonderful. That's what, a, what a pathway <laughs> you've had. Mm. And I just wondered, in all that you do, and uh, I, maybe our listeners will be wondering too, do you ever have any nervousness or anxieties? <laughs> I mean, you're as normal as the rest of us, right? <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Um, very much so, uh, especially with the musical end of things. I think um, because worship is very personal uh, and uh, there's, it's so easy to compare especially with all of the wonderful artists, Christian artists that are 
that are recording these days, it's, um, it's easy to compare oneself with, uh, with someone else. And uh, the value, I think, has to come back to just recognizing what God has gifted and given each of us individually and to be satisfied and content with, with that. Oh, that's a good word. That's a really good word. And I know that you have, um, you're a writer of song, not just a singer and mm -hmm. a musician, mm -hmm. you're a writer. And I just wonder if you could um, just bless us with one of your songs now. Oh, well, I'd be happy to. I, I, have, I have a CD that um, I wrote, uh, that the songs were written over many years yes. and I was able to uh, get it recorded. That would have been close to a decade now, but more recently, within the last couple of years, I've written another song that um, really just uh, expresses what this world needs. The light of the world is Jesus, is what it's called. Oh, wonderful. <laughs> Let's listen. All right, well... <laughs> you could say that we maybe would um, spur someone on who's maybe listening and thinking could I could I work that way for for God uh, a budding musician could you a songwriter could you suggest something that they might mm -hmm. well I I know when when the Lord uh, has given me songs it's usually just been a, a direct download um, I get the words and the melody all together but that only happens when I'm uh, in a place of real communion with Him. You know, so um, I believe that, you know, our worship ministry has to come out of a very, a very solid connection with the Lord. 
Um, he wants to speak to us, and, and certainly the joy uh, that one feels when um, the Lord speaks to you in song is uh, something that is precious, absolutely precious. Yes. I used to carry around with me a little tape recorder. <laughs> goes to show you how many years I've been at this. But, I, but uh, whenever I got a song idea or I felt the Lord was speaking a, a melody or a verse to me, and very often it would be scripture in verse, I would record that. And then, you know, maybe later on I would start pondering it and then the Lord would uh, release the rest of the song. So that's um, something that people can do instead of just ignoring those little melodies that come. Um, just press into them and see how much more God will give you. That's good. That's good food for thought, isn't it? <laughs> and uh, I have a, just one more question, I guess, and that's... Um, is there any song which you've written or which you've heard that really stands out as something that would be um, your song? Or uh, uh, today, I know every day it's different, yeah, right? right? But yeah. uh, it, could you suggest yeah. anyone? Like any kind of a life song or something? Yes. I, I, don't, um, I don't know that there's, ever, that there's an actual life song, but certainly there are seasons for, for songs. Uh, sometimes uh, if a person is going through a very deep, uh, deep waters, um, you know the old hymn, It is well with my soul. Uh, you know, when peace like a river attendeth my way, when sorrows like sea billows roll, whatever uh, my um, lot thou has caused me to say, it is well, it is well with my soul. That one draws near to my heart mm -hmm. as well, Bev. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. sure. But those types of songs uh, will... I think a guard a person and keep them um, as they go through difficult times. And then there are times of joy yes. where a joyful song will be um, just a simple one like the joy of the Lord is my strength. Yes. Um, you know, that might be for a season too. For sure. So, yeah. Would you mind uh, us closing with you playing another song for us, singing oh. another song for us? Well, sure, oh. I'd be happy to. That's wonderful, Beth. Th Thank you. This is a song that I wrote. Um, uh, very soon into my Christian walk and the Lord gave me this song and I have lived really for the past three decades believing that this is a prophetic song. It's a song about how God wants to send his love to others through us. This love will break chains, it will tear down walls, it will set captives free. And uh, so as you listen to this song, um, think about how you might be able to express God's love to someone else today and maybe help to set them free. Amen.
much and everyone who's been watching tonight or whenever you get to see this recording just want you to know again where uh, we've been blessed by Bev Tripp. She lives here with her husband Tom in Wilmot, Nova Scotia and it's just been uh, just a blessing for me to get to know Bev and her husband and um, her ministry, their ministry. Um, and uh, we thank you, Bev. Yeah. Thank God you. God bless you. It's been fun. Thank you. That was a great interview. Warrior songs, songs of love. In the Bible, David was a wonderful musician and he wrote many, many songs, and you read them in the book, the Word of God. When I say the book, the Bible. So many wonderful songs that we sing today. A lot of worship artists have taken it, this, the words right from the Bible and put music to it. So David's got like double duty. He had all those songs when he was uh, alive on this earth, and then now we have also other songs that have, have birthed out of that as well. So being a songwriter, um, I'm a songwriter, and it's uh, it can be the most beautiful way to create something that's deep in the, within your heart and your mind and your soul, and you want to get it out. But it also can be really stressful too, because sometimes you don't even know when those songs are going to come. You could be in the middle of the night and something will come to your mind, even a, even a melody will be so strong and you have to wake up and you have to write down those words and you, <laughs> and you have to somehow memorize the music. So speaking of songstress uh, songwriters, bon Bonnie Wallet, Wallace comes to mind. Um, I don't know why I wanted to call her Bonnie Wiley, but it's definitely Bonnie Wallace. <laughs> Everybody knows Bonnie. She's been in the children's ministries for years, uh, traveled in Canada, United States, and she's just loved by all. She has a story to tell in this song that she wrote. And it's all about love. Good morning. Good morning. Today is November the 1st. It was seven months ago today, my dear husband of 40 years went home to be with Jesus. As the children and I were praying and singing around his bed that night, the presence of the Lord was so strong and so powerful and sweet that I prayed with my eyes open. I thought, maybe I'll see an angel. But as soon as I thought that thought, the Holy Spirit said, blessed are those who have never seen and yet have still believed. I've never seen a vision or an angel. I never walked with James and John. I wasn't there the day you went away, and yet I still can say, Lord, I know you. Your voice is so gentle, so sweet, and so strong. Lord, I believe in you, though I've never seen you with my eyes, I believe in who you are, and Lord, I love you, a joy I can't describe well, so within me when I think of you, I did not see the cross raised on Galgotha, and I wasn't there to watch you die and yet I know your precious blood did flow by faith I am made whole Lord I know you your voice is so gentle so sweet and so strong Soldiers, fifteen minutes for the 
That is Naomi Bistro. I think I'm saying her name right. She is a sweet young lady. Um, I'm sorry, that, that video actually cuts off like that at the very end. So someone must have been taking that video of her, but it, she's just got a gorgeous voice. Well, coming up now, we have just a little bit of a testimony here. And... It made me shed a few tears today when I heard it. When I was 12, we ended up moving house, leaving everything that was familiar. And at that point, everything changed. We would often go and just play in the park and there were a lot of other children around, so it was great. There's opportunity for new friends here. But I don't think any of us really expected to find what we did down there. There was an older man that would also be part of the crowd, but he did take a liking to me, and it was more than any of the other girls. I just didn't realise that it was grooming. I didn't realise he was grooming me. Within the first year, he introduced me to sex, to drugs, to fast cars and fast living. And because I thought it was normal, I just thought, right, well, I better learn how to live it. But what never felt normal was the way that I felt on the inside constantly. Because I'd been raised in church and I kept remembering all of these stories that I'd learned. And the hero in all of these stories always was God. 
he's meant to be good and a protector and if he wasn't those things to me and yet he still loves me <laughs> then the way I can hurt him and get his attention is by hurting myself and putting myself in as much risk as possible. And that is when, at 17, I hit the self-destruct button. I just had no sense of value. So if you want to satisfy yourself, fine. If you want to use me, fine. If you want to hurt me, fine. I'm already broken. But on the inside, actually, it's a really frightening place to be. When you're living in a really dark place, you really notice when someone takes time to notice you and to reach out. And that's what my sister did. She said, Debbie, what you experienced was abuse. <laughs> it was like a light bulb went on. I saw everything that I had gone through with totally different eyes. She then gave me a book full of these turnaround stories of girls just like me. And it had come from an organisation called Mercy, I started to think, I'm not the only one in the world that feels like this. Less than a year later, I found myself walking through the doors of this residential home, feeling the same, feeling broken, feeling dirty, feeling ashamed, but also feeling hopeful for the first time in a really long time. One of the things I really needed to be authentic about was how much I hated God. And I remember grabbing a basketball. You know the sound it makes when it hits the concrete? Every time it made that sound. That darkness and the hatred I felt towards God seemed to bubble up and surface and surface and surface. And I said to him, so what have you got to say for yourself? Not even you could rescue me. I felt utterly betrayed. And as I turned to walk away, I heard his voice in my heart, right here, and he said, I love you. I'm supposed to be unlovable and broken, but what he said to me in that moment, he knew was exactly what I needed to hear. Am I going to tell you that my life completely changed from that moment? No, it didn't. But what happened in that moment is that it's like a seed was planted. As it took root in my heart, it started to uproot, if you like, things that I'd actually believed about myself. And it's changed the way I look at myself. And it's changed the way I look at my past. And it's changed the way I look at my future. I actually see it through hope. Not hopelessness, like I used to, not brokenness. But actually, I know now. I know. I know. I know that God loves me. His love has become safe. It's actually a real relationship. As much as we sometimes hate to admit it, we can't fix ourselves. And actually, it is only Jesus that can. Those words of love transformed that child, the inner child's life. Um, several years ago, I wrote a song for my daughter, in particular for my daughter, but also for all those who were wounded in heart, um, who had been through so many things that they perhaps couldn't even talk about to anyone. I wrote this song and then I made a video of it. It's probably one of my most favorite songs that I've ever written, and it's simply called Wounded Heart. This woman's testimony that you just heard, she was broken. She was, she was completely divided in two. And because of the Lord and his love and mercy and people that gathered around her, she was healed. So that testimony to me is is a perfect testimony of God's love. So here's a song that I wrote called Wounded Heart. To the root, 
She hopes that she won't give herself away. She knows just what to say. She sees what she should do. No one will ever know. Thank、you
Fusco here, and welcome to today's two minute message. So I realize that there's a lot going on in our world right now. And I realize that almost everyone I know is frustrated, discouraged, they're going through something significant. And because of all that's going on right now, you know, there's an old saying that hurt people hurt people. And what it means is that people who are frustrated get frustrated at people. People who are really hurting, they hurt other people because it's almost like, you know, because I'm hurting, misery loves company. Because I'm frustrated, frustration loves company. And because that's all going on and pretty much everyone we all know, I don't know anybody who's like, man, this is just so easy, all this stuff that's going on right now. Uh, I want to encourage you simply to not try and be right but to try and understand people. Now, what I mean by that is I don't want you to live wrong, but I think so often we're, we're so busy trying to prove ourselves right that, you know, my pastor, John Henry Corcoran, used to always tell me, Daniel, let's make sure that we're not so right that we're wrong. And, and, and sometimes we want to be, rather than caring about somebody and seeking to hear them, we just want to make sure they know that they did it wrong or that they didn't please us or whatever that thing is. And all we're really doing is we're really heaping more guilt, more struggle, more strife on everybody. And I think one of the things I love so much about who the Lord, uh, who Jesus is, is that oftentimes in the Bible, Jesus knew everything, but he would ask people lots of questions. He, he, what do you want me to do for you? You know, he knew it was in people's hearts, but yet he still sought to, to have them express that stuff. And I really think that, you know, sometimes in our, in our desires to be right, we just push people farther away when we're really supposed to be the hands and feet of Jesus drawing close to people and helping them on the journey. So I want to encourage you to seek to understand people who you don't agree with. Just seek to, to understand where they're coming from, what their fears are, what they're, what they're thinking about. Because then we build the bridge to be able to have real substantial conversations about the differences. So this is what I do. I want you to share this video. And in the comment section, I want you to tag somebody who you see doing a great job, who's seeking to understand, who's, who's, who's got a heart that's open to people so that they can help people go through all the different frustrations that are going on in their life right now. And God bless you guys. I'll see you soon. What we're going to do, Sandy, hit the button. We're going to shout and shine. Goes like this. When toiling is ended and my burdens are laid down, what door will then be mine? Then be mine then my robe will be spotless and I'll put on the right crown. In heaven I'll shout and shine. I'm gonna shine, shine. gonna shine, shine in that city of love divine. Love divine. Over, Over there. Free from care, with the saints I'll shout and shine. I'll never be lonesome in a glad city so fair, and all be joy divine. Joy divine for sure. My loved ones and my neighbors will be there. In heaven I'll shout and shine. I'm gonna shout, gonna shout, gonna shine, gonna shine in that city of love divine. Love divine over there, over there, okay. free from care. With the saints I'll shout and shine. I'm gonna shout, gonna shout. Gonna shout. Shine, oh, shine in that city of love divine, love divine. Over there, Over there okay. free from care, with the saints I'll shout and shine. Gonna shout, gonna shine, I'll shout and shine. Shout and shine, that was the Torchman, the Torchman Quartet. Well, we're on to our last song of the evening. I just wanted to, to also mention to you that um, Gospel Music with Friends Online is brought to you by Music by Roxy, Second Chance Ministries, and Grace Church in Port Hope. I thank um, Port Hope, especially um, my church that, um, that helps us do this. So our last song is called These Are the Days Song. I thought there was another line to that, but it's These Are the Days Song. And uh, 
it's written by a friend of mine and they're i think the engineer of the of the song and someone else i think there's three people that are responsible for this song we're going to end with it and so you can just go out of this whole evening rejoicing and and knowing that we are in the last days but we do not have to grieve we do not have to to feel worried or have any fear because we know all good things are going to come and we just have to keep on hanging on and hoping and believing in the one that loves us and is coming back for us. You've been a wonderful audience and I'm glad to see people have joined. I'm just gonna mention too that I'll probably be on YouTube again next week, Wednesday night at eight o'clock, the Lord willing. And I'm going to be able to share more songs, original songs and videos of people that have given me permission to do so and have encouraged me to do that. So don't uh, don't think that there isn't anything to do next week because there will be on Wednesday night at eight o'clock right here on YouTube. Thank you so much for listening. God bless you and enjoy this last song as we end the program. are the days of confusion Isolation filled with fear These are the days Make no illusion Can you feel as time is near These are the days of forgiveness Share the story of His grace These are the days To stand as one And lift our hands in praise These are the days I might leave.